Hello everyone, Scott here again. Welcome back to the Guilty Pleasure Cinema, where my uh, sweater's kind of riding up. Um, this is uh, the second status of the cinema. Haven't done one of these in a while. Meant to do one at Christmas, but things got crazy and I didn't do one. Um, really just where we're at. Uh, as you probably noticed, I'm behind on the quarterlies, which sucks, because I wanted to get those as soon as I can. And I've kind of gone out of order even. I've done uh, some of the indications and gotten them through, but I have overrated and Especially Trailer Fist. But they're all coming, don't worry. That stuff's coming. And as you can probably tell, this isn't storyline tough. This is just me to the camera. Um, they're coming. I Frankenstein review went up, and I'm so happy with it. It's so good. And the next one is Electra, which I didn't own. <laughs> I didn't own, so I had to actually find a clip. A friend of mine pulled the clip that I wanted for it, and we used it. And I just went and bought it today. Yeah, so that's the first time I've done that. Um, I'm normally bad for actually buying a movie more than once. I, I once bought Rock and Rolla for five bucks on DVD, and then I saw the Blu-ray for five bucks and went, oh, I'll pick that up. I like Guy Ritchie stuff. Forgetting I already bought it. I didn't watch it either, so I have I have them both. I opened it already, so screwed there. I literally, when I bought Electra, it was in like the f three for five bin. So I looked, and I'm like, Man on Fire. I like that. I'll buy that. I own it. I got it for four ninety nine at Future Shop three years ago now, and I got it for five dollars today. It's still closed though, sealed, so I can take it back and get something else. So that's fine. I almost got to see it from Alcatraz, which I've never seen, but I'll probably like. I know I didn't have. Should have went with that. But anyway, Electra is the next one, and then the big denouement, the the penultimate episode before the anniversary. And that is going to be crazy. That's going to be big. I'm going to do my usual probably and taking a couple days off work to do it. I booked time by my birthday and that's what it is, so why not? Um, that's coming. And unlike prior years, I actually am trying to actually work in others. Because it's usually the one-man show for these things, aside from having Amy in it last time. Um, I have plans for that. And actually for the one before, too. So you'll see what's coming up there. And per usual, I reference everything. So it'll be a lot of fun and crazy and hectic and... Yeah. So that's the main show. The quarterlies are still going, absolutely. I mean, I've got them plotted when I want what. It's a matter of getting them done. And I slack on that sometimes. So they're coming, absolutely. Um, as a bit of insight, Trailer Fist is kind of like, I'll watch the trailer, get ideas, and then I'll shoot it. Um, indications, I kind of do a take where I kind of ad-lib it. I have my idea, then I just do it. And then I'll actually do it again, kind of like, all right, I got that out, let's actually go through the flow and work in any ad-libs to be properly structured. And overrated is basically just me going, oh yeah, this movie I don't like, and off I go. <laughs> that one's pure ad-lib. So those, those are the quarterlies, and I like them, I need to do more of them, especially considering I've started a weekly show, Box Officer, which is a title that I love, and I love doing it. I've literally tracked box office stuff for 10 years now. I am a list kind of freak. I like to maintain order of things like sports history and events, who won what championship, what team originated when. I'm a sucker for that, and it being on Wikipedia is no good. I started this before Wikipedia. I had stuff on my computer about who won the WWF championship way back when. And when? And I compiled it from wrestling magazines and watching it live. And of course there's the internet, which has all of the history now, whatever, but I have my list. So I do that with box office. I like to track what's number one, what is here, what is there, and I always look at like what's the biggest for January, what's the R ratings, and that kind of stuff. And I wanted to start a show like that last year, especially when Guardians started going crazy and just breaking records and changing all the rules. But I knew I wanted to wait and do something at the start of the year. That's probably a better time for it. And so far, so good, because American Snipers has broken all the rules. So it, it's been great. So that's a weekly one. That is absolutely going, because I do this anyway. So I may as well turn a camera on and talk about it. So that's the, that. So I have the weekly show there. Other than that, um, I don't have anything else to say. Except that I am hosting someone else's show for an episode. Thrand and Elgrim, you might remember them from way back. They did uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. They reviewed it the same day I did. And that's how we both kind of went, hey, you reviewed it too. Uh, but it's for Halloween back in 2012. 
we both saw that and did it, and I actually had the guys involved in my end of days review. Sorry, I have an itch. Got them in the end of days review because I was having like stock up for uh, supplies for the end of the world, and they were in it for that one. I had them in briefly with Masters of the Universe, and I wanted to get them to do something for Thirteenth Warrior, but we couldn't quite work out the timing. So that one wasn't as good, but um, they did a Die Hard review, and they've really kind of like picked something specific. So this Die Hard thing is good because Thran and El Elgrim they did a thing where they took the actual sword, like you know the, the new sword in the Force Awakens trailer for Star Wars, where lightsaber comes out and then two little pieces come out. Colbert immediately went, oh, it's it's one source, and you can't cut through because it would stop, and whatever, all, all that stuff. People say it's impractical, how could you use it, etc, etc, etc. We'll leave it to the sword masters to find out. Thrand and Elgrim, they actually do tests of things. Like, they'll test uh, swords against gelatin heads, or modern firearms against shields is something they're, they're working with. So, they'll do stuff like that. And what they did was they actually got a sword like that, and dipped it in paint, and used the sword as you would use that sword. You don't swing it like a baseball bat, you don't swing it like a lightsaber would. You don't do that kind of stuff. You would use it the way that sword's intended. So leave it to someone like that to actually do it, and hey, turns out, you'll never hit yourself. You won't. So it worked out great. And the way the cross guard is, and the way it all moves, even little things like how it blocks like this, and you can literally turn the lightsaber, because it's blocked like this, and if you turn it, you're hitting his hand with that piece. That wouldn't hurt. I mean, it would, but it wouldn't really work if it was just a cross guard. But it's a lightsaber. There you go. So they, they, they discovered stuff with that. That's what they do. So they did Die Hard. They reviewed it because it's a Christmas movie. They had the fans vote on that. And what could you replicate? And they're like, well, we could do the table bit. But at the same time, shooting through a table, if it's this thick or this thick, whatever, you know it's going to work. So no sense testing that, plus firearms. So what they do is actually tested the vent jump, where they had the, the, the gun, it was the MP5 in the actual movie, and he braced it, and he climbed down using the strap, and then jumped to the vent, and the strap gave way, and there you go. And in their testing, they had to do it three or four times, because it was single camera, so he had to do it from up in the attic. Then he had to do it from outside, then from another angle, and another angle. But he actually tested it using an old wooden gun. Turns out the strap came loose during that. If they did one more, it would have come loose and whoop, he would have fallen. It was just onto the ground because he was out of the window, like to first floor. But they tested it and it's pretty awesome. So, by all means, check that out. They wanted to put an uncut version up, but they had troubles with YouTube, so I've hosted it here. Um, of course, obviously, if there's troubles with it, I'll, I'll take it down. Sorry, guys, but <laughs> um, but they're they're already posting up things pointing it my way. And, I mean, admittedly, that's kind of awesome, considering they're getting all this attention with the Star Wars thing. And they're going, hey, you want to see Die Hard? Go over here and watch it. I'm not going to complain. But they're friends of mine, so I'll do it anyway. I was, honestly, hesitant to put it up, because it's not mine. I didn't want to put anything of mine on my channel that isn't mine. I don't like that. Now there's literally a video on my channel not by me. Feels weird. But I want to help the guys out. And they're awesome, they'll help me out whenever I ask for something, they pretty much jump and do it. And it's fun, like, the Masters of the Universe bit was so fun. <laughs> it was like, by the power of Odin, and this, this goofy stuff. So, check it out, check out all the stuff. Check out Triskaidekaphiles, Jason's site. Um, he's having some rough time right now, so by all means, check it out and give comments, share their love on that. And uh, The Morbidly Made, I just read John's leaving The Morbidly Made and starting his own show. So as far as I'm concerned, now I got Mike and John with their own shows. I got two friends with shows. <laughs> I, I, it's an amicable split, so I, I'm I, I, sad to see, but I mean they play well off each other, so we'll see what happens there. Um, Turning Heel's always just going. It's pretty much just wrestling predictions at this point. And the Rumble's coming, so there'll be one of those. And otherwise, that's all I got. But there was something actually else, but I forgot completely what it was. Um, the one thing I will be doing, actually, is including Hyper Bowl for movies that I missed, like Sabotage, The Raid 2, The Protector 2. I have those DVDs and Blu-rays in the other room, so when I watch them, I'm actually going to do a Hyper Bowl based on those, too. So, that is the status of the cinema, the first vloggy type thing for 2015, and thank you for all the support, thank you for all the views. Uh, I would like more comments, because I know, like, it's getting bigger and there's... More and more times I see someone's name on there, I'm like, who's that liking it? I have no idea who you are. 
I'd like to know. I like comments. So check out guiltypleasurecinema.com. Check out the Blip site. And always check out the website on uh, YouTube as well. I have a channel there. Everything but the main videos are there. And I pretty much pulled Trailer Fist because I've gotten uh, content matches for trailers. Which is ridiculous. But considering it doesn't know the difference between a trailer and a movie, the Ro Robocop one for the new, uh, new film got uh, ID matched. And I'm like, it's from the trailer, which is put up by them for free use. It's literally an ad they want people to see, and I'm reviewing it. But the content ID match doesn't know the difference between a trailer and the normal movie when it's the exact same thing, basically. So it's a losing battle there. But check all that stuff out. Check out everything there. That's all I got. I'm going to ramble like that for a bit now. So this is going up Sunday night. I'm going to pretty much just relax before I really, really hammer down on stuff for the anniversary. I need to basically write the next two reviews to write the third, which is anniversary, and I need the ASAP to be able to shoot all this stuff. What's that mean? Maybe I'm not in the chair? Yeah, I'm not going to be in the chair again. Um, and that's pretty much it. Hopefully I'll be able to watch the fight night tonight. UFC has their fight pass thing up, and stupid Rogers deal now to TSN means that I can't watch it directly until after the replay. But, I lament. It just joins the WWE Network. Oh, turning heel humor. So yeah, watch all my stuff is basically the long story short. And all will be well. Thanks for watching.